Hey kids, Miss Kulkarni here. We are going to move on to some graphs in liquids and solutions. And what are they called? They are called as solubility curves. Now, these are two different solubility curves. One is strictly for solids dissolved in liquid and the other is gases dissolved in liquid. And they are different in some ways. But what is common? X and Y axis. Along the X axis, they both have increasing amount of temperature. And along the Y axis, we have the amount which is dissolved of solute in 100 grams of water. So, this is always grams of solute per 100 grams of solvent. Now, look carefully about the shape of both the graphs. In case of gases, if you look at the graph, the graphs are sloping upward. As we increase the temperature, graphs are mostly sloping upward. Whereas in case of gases, the graphs go downward. So the slope is downward. That's the visual expression. Well, what does actually it means? If you have to find out, we can take each point on the graph. And what we did here was we selected some temperature 20, 40 and 60. And in order to find out how much amount of solid is dissolved, we went from each of the temperature up till we touched the graph. From there, we drew a perpendicular line till it touches the y-axis scale. And then whatever you get here, that is the amount dissolved at that temperature. So like for example, at 20 degree, when we go up and then from the graph, we go to the y-axis, I end up having there 90. That means 90 gram is the amount dissolved at 20. If I repeat it with 40 and if I repeat with 60, I end up getting these different values. So let's write down 90 gram will be dissolved at 20 degrees. If it's 40 degrees, we'll roughly have about 1 or 2 grams. And if we have 60 gram, we'll roughly have 123 grams. Each one is dissolved in 100 grams of water. That part is going to be same. So what is increasing? It is the amount of solid which is increasing. So you got it right. In case of solids dissolved in liquid, as the temperature increases, the amount of solute dissolved in 100 grams of solvent water also increases. Let's do similar thing for the gases. And I'm just selecting one of the gas, CO, and from 10, 20, and 30, if I want to find out how much is present, I go all the way up till it touches the graph, and then I go across till it touches the y-axis. So at 10 degree, we're getting 1.2 grams. At 20 degree, if you follow the lines, it will be 1.0 grams. And at 30 degrees, if we go, that will be roughly about 0.9 grams. So what are we trying to find out with this? All of this is dissolved in 100 grams of water. If you look carefully, the amount of solute is decreasing. So in case of gases, the amount decreases. In case of solids, it will be increasing. This is how to use solubility curves and decide in short time whether the substance is unsaturated or saturated or supersaturated. For that, we should remember to find the point which corresponds to temperature and the amount. If the point is below the line, it is always unsaturated. If the point is above the line, it is always supersaturated. And if the point is on the line, it is saturated. So let's get a graph and suppose if this is what the graph looks like. And let's see, maybe we have some points. Your first point comes suppose over here. Second point is coming over here and the third point is coming at the graph. And if I write those points as A, B and C. Point A is below the graph. If it's below the line, that will be unsaturated. So you can put that as unsaturated. 
if it's a border line like this point see here what will happen it is super saturated so you can say super saturated and then if it is on the line like point B here it will be saturated so you can have got the point if you know the location we can easily figure out what is the state of saturation if you look at this figure this is the example of solubility curves for several solids and we have to answer a couple of questions using the graphs we have to actually find out the degree of saturation for each substance the first one is KCl and then what I did was I marked each of the graph with a particular color so KCl is the one which is marked with green color and we know that there is 40 grams of solute dissolved in 100 grams of water at 80 degree what I did simply is to locate that point 40 grams is over here this is the grams and then from here we went to 80 degree and we located the point the point is below the line so if it is below the line then what does it mean it means it is unsaturated let's look at the next one for KNO3 I highlighted that with the yellow graph here and then we have 120 grams dissolving 100 grams at 60 degree so we went from 60 degree all the way up 120 degree over here and we got point somewhere over here this point is above the yellow line and if it is above what does it mean that means it is super saturated let's look at the third example we have sodium nitrate which is kind of with this purple line which I have we have 80 grams dissolved in 100 grams at 10 degree same old stuff we went from 10 degree and 80 degree and we located the point and bingo what happened the point is actually on the line if it is exactly on the line that means solution is saturated this is one more example of solubility curves you need to find out which curve you are looking for like in this example we are looking for potassium nitrate so I highlighted the one with the green so I know that's the potassium nitrate now always be careful to find out how much is the amount of solvent and it's 100 grams here because remember our y-axis is always out of 100 grams if suppose something else is given you have to make sure to convert that to 100 gram so this is fine 100 grams of solvent and the temperature is 50 degree what do we do if you have to find out amount of solute we simply go with 50 degrees beginning temperature and we go all the way up till the line touches the graph and after it touches the graph we go across till it reaches y-axis and that is the exact amount of solid which we need and what we're getting here that is 80 grams and remember that 80 gram is in 100 grams of solvent so look at the next question it's asking you how many grams of potassium nitrate will dissolve in 300 grams of water we have same temperature this is we something solve using simple ratio so if we have 80 grams that's dissolved in 100 grams so how much will be dissolved in 300 grams and if you actually find out the ratio proportion we can easily figure out x will be in this case 80 times 3 which is going to be 240 grams okay let's move on next one is if 100 grams of water containing saturated potassium nitrate at 50 degree is cooled to 10 degree how many grams will it precipitate up what we need to do is with these two temperatures we go up till we touch the graph and then we go across to find out how much is the exact amount dissolved to make it saturated so at 50 degree we find out it is 
80 grams and at 10 degrees we find out that is 20 gram so if you cool if you go from 20, 50 degrees to 10 degrees what's going to happen from 80 gram is going to drop down to 20 gram so what happens to the extra amount is going to precipitate out and that is how much 80 minus 20 so 60 gram is the one which will precipitate out so what do you all think interpreting solubility curves is not that difficult right all right well i hope you enjoyed the video i will see you again in next video until then bye bye